Good morning. It's Sunday, October 25th, 2020. And uh, one of my fans out there the other day commented that they hadn't seen a video since early August. And they're absolutely right. We've been very busy here for a number of different ways. And so I thought today I'd just uh, take a couple minutes and share what's going on. Not a whole lot of exciting stuff, but uh, the tanks, as always, are filled with plants. And so somebody commented some time ago <clears throat> that the uh, fertilizer, not fertilizer, but the uh, CO2 was just like water and it really didn't do anything. Well, I, all I can tell you is I've never had a run of probably two years now with the planting staying as lush and as filled as they have been. So whether it's working or not, I don't know uh, if that's the contributor, but in the past I'd go through cycles where I would lose a lot of the plants. What's interesting is as you look at this, this is the corner tank, uh, that 50, 56 gallon is it? Um, and in prior videos, there was a heavy growth of kabamba off in the right-hand corner. Uh, and the kabamba in both tanks is just about gone. Now, some of it is the fish eating it. I understand that. But the rest of it is just, uh, maybe it's a water chemistry. I don't know. The fish seem to be doing fine. I haven't lost any recently. Got those cream-colored lyre tail uh, mollies up here, and uh, as you saw, we'll see in the office tank some guppies that I moved out here from uh, the office tank where they were growing up. Got some nice tail structures on them, and the uh, sword tails are doing well. There's a bunch of males in this particular tank. I've got two females, females up in the what were the better tanks. Uh, that I'll show you shortly. But uh, let's see what happens if I give them some of the algae tabs that all the fish seem to go wild for. So hold on just one second. While I add some of these algae tabs. They really do like them, and uh, usually it starts a feeding frenzy. The neons in this particular tank have been dwindling as that uh, fungus on them seems to overtake them eventually, so there's only about four or five left here. There's a dozen in the other tank, one, two, three, four, five, yes, five, uh, that are doing much better. There's a dozen over there that have no disease at all. But as you can see, those uh, cream-colored mollies are beautiful. They haven't bred, though. There's at least uh, one female among them. And there's that tricolored shark that's so colorful. We should see the red tail sharks out shortly. And over here you see the uh, small black mollies that I told you uh, we'll be telling you in the office tank. They don't grow much bigger than what you see here, which is surprising. Here comes a red tail shark. One in the office tank has gotten much bigger than these have. There's two in here, and they do look so pretty. I'm very pleased with them. I, one of my favorite fish, along with the black mollies. It's been funny over time with the black mollies, I've been able to find some really large uh, pairs, and they've had lots of babies over time, and they come and go. And lo and behold, uh, the young don't grow as big as the adults that bred them do. I don't know what that's about. As you'll see in the betta tank, here's the betta right now coming out from behind the plants. 
I moved him from that little small five gallon bed of tank uh, just because I lost one of the two bedders. It's a divided tank. I'll show you in a minute. And uh, I, I just felt the knee. Well, no, what I know what I did. I took one of the female sword tails that looked very pregnant and ready to give birth and put him in the one side of that split tank that I hoped would uh, breed or, or give babies. And she did, overnight. Had at least a dozen or more. And uh, got her out of there. But slowly the babies all disappeared. And I realized later on they were able to get around that barrier that separated the two sides of that five gallon tank. And as soon as they did, the bed on the other side, of course, made a meal of them. And so I finally just took that bed out and put it in this tank, as you just saw, and uh, used that tank, the five gallon tank, uh, for some of the black mollies. And I'll show you that shortly. And then I put two female sword tails over there that looked like they were giving, ready to give birth. They haven't. I don't know if, uh, and I put a couple of small guppies in there too. So I don't know if they're not having the babies because there's so many fish there or whether they just weren't ready. Because like I said, when I did the first one, I mean, she had babies that very night. And so I was very pleased with that. Sometimes the change in water will trigger that action. But as you can see, there's a lot of activity here now uh, with those algae tabs. They really do enjoy them. And I try and put a couple of them in the tank every day with the feeding. We've got the loaches in here. And I guess the, uh, and the, the two angelfish that you're looking at right here. They've been doing well. Uh, I took the black angels out of here and added them to the other tank as you will see. But these two have been doing just fine. They're like a bluish gray. And the uh, best way to show off these fish is just put some of those plant tabs, or not plant tabs, but algae tabs down there and everybody's out in the front where I can videotape them as you're seeing here. Plant-wise, uh, I've moved some of the Amazon sword plants around and so what you see taking up most of the center of this tank is a huge Amazon sword plant that is doing very well but takes up... I, I heard somebody recently just complain because the plants do get so large and now I'm starting to understand that because this is taking up pretty much the tank. But I've also got this very beautiful, uh, almost purplish, um, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but you, you'll recognize it. And that's doing very well in both of the big tanks. And so that gets kind of big too. I know over in Hidden Reef they have a huge tank that they've got a lot of those in the, and they're all growing out now to the point where it doesn't look as good as it did at the beginning. Oh, I see we have our glass cleaning pleco out at the algae tabs. He does a nice job with this, uh, the glass on this tank or plastic on this tank, whatever you, it is. And so I haven't had to do much work to keep that clean because he comes out at night and just keeps working that front glass, like I said. But you can see uh, he's gotten quite big over time. And I know I've gotten rid of a couple of them. I took them over to Hidden Reef and gave them away for credit. And uh, you can see how big this one's getting. They're an ugly fish, but at the same time, they're a beautiful fish. They've got some great finnage that when the fin stands up, there, there, now you can see it once in a while. Uh, it, it was a very pretty finnage fish. And so with that, let's move over to, as I call it, the bow tank, which is the same size as this, but it's quite a different layout in the tank. This one, like I said, is pie shaped, has a depth to it that really can't be seen from the front. It's way behind even that Amazon sword plant. Okay, moving over to the other side of the living room here. We'll take a look at this tank. Here in the bow tank, I just threw some algae tabs in there, so you'll have a lot of the fish down in front. And I especially love the uh, 
denison barbs that you see right down here, the object tables. There's three of them. And I've always admired them, but I never wanted to pay the price that they were asking for them, which was usually up in the $15 to $20 a piece range. And uh, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, I finally found some young ones that were, they were still expensive. They were in the $10, $11 range. And I said, you know what, I'm finally going to do it. And so there's three of them. They've been doing very well here. They've been very healthy and they school nicely. And uh, they're beautiful fish. The, the yellow in the tail, the two tips of the tail, the bright yellow, are just so spectacular, as I hope you can see here. And then they have the red front uh, stripe. It's a black stripe, but it's reddish in the front. And uh, just a spectacular fish. There's that black angel I was telling you about, and two of the other angels. I think there's two black angels in here someplace. Uh, once we get the algae tabs in there, it gets kind of crowded in the front there, doesn't it? And when they all come out like that, we lose some of the effect of the schooling of the neon tetris, which is so pretty, especially against the, the green of the plants here. Plants are doing very well. Um, I tend to shove them around once in a while. I, I hate to pull them out of the gravel, and I do keep a deep bed of gravel. It's at least an inch to an inch and a half uh, because I'd love to have the plant roots to really take hold. And I, I don't try to clean out that gravel much. So there's plenty of fertilizer for the plants there. I do have some kabamba coming back here right now, as you can see over here in the left-hand corner. But you remember, you, you see here that very pretty uh, leafy plant that was so thick in the center of this tank. And just looking at it now, I realize it's not there at all anymore. You did see some of it over in the corner tank. But, and then back behind that, obviously, are some Amazon sword plants. There's like three of them there. And as I mentioned before, they tend to grow different sizes. So they must be different varieties of Amazon sword because the one has huge leaves that goes all the way up to the top of the tank. The one that I put in the back left-hand corner is sort of mid-range. And then over here, you have one that's on the smaller side. It never gets up to that mid-range. And then down in front, well, you can't see it because of all the fish, but there's some small Amazon sword plants that just stay really low. Red-tailed sharks doing very nicely here, as you can see. Again, there, there's a tricolored shark. Uh, not doing, not growing as big as they have in the office tank, as you'll see. And there's the other tricolored shark. So there's two red tailed sharks, two tricolored sharks. And you can also see some of the small black mollies. They are fairly mature, so they're just not growing up into the full size that the parents were. The parents were huge fish, beautiful fish. And these tend to have a liar tail on them, which I like. But they aren't growing up into full-size fish in my mind. Uh, we've got some sword tails in here and a couple of platies. Um, and then that reddish plant that you saw over in the corner tank has also grown up here in the right-hand side of that tank. Uh, I'm going to move that in the center where you get more of a... a better look at it, but instead this plant, this leafy plant, the curly leaf plant that you see, the light green, lime green, uh, that one was hidden in the back and I just moved it out to the front uh, so you can get a better view of it. But anyway, everybody's doing just fine here. Uh, haven't had anything die recently, which is always a good thing. And there's a lot of fish in this tank, I know that but they seem to be doing just fine. Got a lot of aeration, a good filtering system. And uh, they get five different kinds of food each day. One, one feeding a day. The CO2 uh, is a booster is in all the tanks once a day. And then on a weekly basis, as I change about a third of the water, there's a uh, leaf zone fertilizer that I put in here. So 
in my way of thinking, it's working. These plants are doing well, even though they do tend to cycle. As I said, uh, the kabamba was over in the corner here uh, where you see that uh, Italian vowel, I think it is. I could be wrong on that. It's a form of vowel that has got a forest over here. And I moved that forest to the back because it was taken over the front and uh, moved that curly leaf plant to the front so you could see it. And uh, like I say, everybody's doing just fine here. Everybody's enjoying the algae tabs. And that usually brings out the uh, clown loaches. There's two of them in here. And as I mentioned once before in a video, I found that they do like to hang out in a, a covered area. So I put two logs in here to haul out logs, uh, ceramic logs. And they tend to live in there. And usually when the tabs are introduced, they come out to feed. Very skittish. They, uh, as soon as any movement around the room, they disappear back into those logs immediately. Uh, so they obviously can see beyond the tank very easily. Don't know what else to point out here at this point. Um, let's take a look at that better tank and I'll show you what I was talking about, okay? Again, that's another part of the living room here. So I get to enjoy these tanks with my wife uh, on an ongoing basis. We can sit here and watch TV and anytime commercials come on or whatever, we can distract ourselves by watching the fish instead. My wife continues to be very engaged in the fish, uh, fish hobby. She's come a long way since she first got introduced to this. And uh, she pays even more attention, I think, than I do because there's nothing I can point out that she hasn't already noticed. Or she'll point something out to me that needs to be taken care of if a fish dies, which they don't very often die, uh, she's always the one to spot it. And, oh, there, the clown loach just went scooting by. Went so fast, I don't know if you could have seen it or not. And it's over in the corner, but I won't be able to catch that. So I hope you saw it scoot on by. I don't know what happened that it shied away so quickly. But they do tend to chase each other once in a while, especially when there's food to be had down here. There's a couple of serpe up in the tank, up in the plants there, and a couple uh, uh, cherry barbs, uh, a couple of marbled mollies, and uh, of course the sword tails, like I said. Enjoy sword tails, and the neons, now they're schooling a little bit better, as you can see, and I count them on a regular basis, and there's a dozen. It's amazing how you can count fish. I can look at that and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and catch two over there and it'll be 12 each time. So I do that three or four times to sample uh, to see if I get the same number and I do. You see those cherry barbs in the center there? Um, just add some nice color to the tank. But like I say, my favorites right now are the red tail sharks, of course, and those denison barbs. Here's a better shot of those Amazon sword plants I was telling you about. You can see over in the left-hand corner that medium range one. Uh, straight back is the taller one. And then right down in front here, you have the uh, smaller ones that I was telling you about. But they do well, and uh, they're a pretty plant. But they've taken over half of this tank. So again, at any one point in time, the plants become dominant of one type or another. All right, let's switch. Okay, this is that split five gallon betta tank that doesn't have any bettas in it right now. What it does have is a bunch of those black mollies that I was telling you about. These are all bred from the parents. They were a good size, but they're not growing any bigger than what you see right here. So I've got six of them in this side of the tank. A couple males, a couple females, and just trying to see if they'll actually breed that size. And on, on the left side, you can see there's some guppies, similar to the ones that you're going to see in the office tank shortly. And uh, there's two sword tails in there. There's one brick red sword that you can see in the back. And there's a pineapple sword that sometimes comes out to the front. I see her facing the front here, so we'll see if it comes out or not. 
Yeah, there she is, right in the front. And she's the one that had those 12 babies I was telling you about that somehow got through that barrier and got over to the side where the betta made lunch out of them. So I'm just experimenting a little bit, see what happens. So uh, we'll eventually get bettas on either side of there, but somehow I feel with the big tanks, the bettas have so much more room to roam, as it were. You know, so we'll see. But we're counting on having some babies here, and that's why we've got a little bit of plants, floating plants, especially on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. We'll see what happens. And now back to the office tank. Interesting. Uh, this is just overcrowded with babies, especially now. You see the red-tailed shark. He's fun. Got himself a nice hiding place. Oh, there we go. We got the clown loach out, too. I moved a fixture that you can see back where they just disappeared. And the red-tailed shark is getting big. and You can always tell when they get a little bit older because they have that white tip on top of their top fin along with that bright red tail against the jet black of the body. Anyway, he hides under that piece and the clown loaches go inside that piece. There's an opening and one time when I was cleaning this tank I took that fixture out to catch some other fish and all of a sudden I heard some noise. Here comes the clown loach now. Whoops. Uh, and it was inside the fixture which I had taken out of the tank and laid in this bin and all of a sudden there he was flopping around. Oh, how about that? When I put it back in, I put it up front. And so it's right where the tail of the red-tailed shark is right now. And they found that hole. And they go into it all the time. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. That's certainly out of focus here. but There's a hole there. And they both go in it. There's only two left. I had three clown loaches in here. Remember to eliminate the snail problem I had was just overcome with snails and uh, they took care of that so they did their job and just recently one of the three just w looked emaciated and uh, finally passed away but the other two are doing just fine and as you can see with the plant growth here there's a lot of protection for the young ones and this is mostly all guppies now. I've moved the uh, black mollies out into the other tanks, hoping they would get bigger. Uh, there's a couple of babies left in here right now, but they haven't really grown a whole lot. Not full size like their parents were. Uh, but the guppies are doing just fine here. I've got to move some of them out into the other tanks just to create more room here. And you can see some of the tails of, of broad reddish tail for example um, a lot of females and they're doing just fine out in the other room as you will see and there's that clown loach again I don't know if you're going to see him disappear into that fixture or not that's one of the two that are left and there's about three catfish in here besides and they're doing a good job so anyway this it's really my pride and joy in the sense of I work here in my office quite a bit and I can just turn and look at these fish and uh, it gives me a very relaxing day here and I always enjoy it and it's uh, low maintenance gotta keep the algae off uh, I'm trying to think if there's still a pleco in here or not yeah there must be a pleco in here and it keeps the side the glass fairly clean uh, but other than that the plants get uprooted at times, of course, and uh, they're all doing just fine. But I do so love the red-tailed shark. It's a beautiful fish. And like I say, I've got one in this tank that started out very small, and it's gotten a good size now. And in the other tanks, I have at least two in each of the other two tanks.
I haven't seen that split tail guppy around for a long while and just uh, came across some uh, recently, not recently anymore, months ago. I haven't been doing much uh, fish shopping since the uh, conid restrictions came into place. But uh, here's that red tail shark. Oh, look at him. Isn't he gorgeous? Love the colors on that red tail shark. Always been a favorite.